welcome back. Uh, we took a little break um, for talking spaces, but we are back. And today we will be discussing some very pertinent issues that affect us and affect you out there. Uh, talking Spaces is a space where we discuss issues um, under the umbrella of convening for equality, but we discuss issues that affect uh, people of uh, various diversities, but also mainly sexual and gender minorities, um, you know, how discrimination and whatever issues affect the community of sexual and gender minorities. So today, we are going to dive deep into the Dr. Frank Mugisha and others versus Uganda Registrations Bureau. We are aware that it has cast a lot of fear. The headlines have been very sensationalized. They've, they've really put a lot of fear in our community but also uh, given a leeway to authorities who have been oppressing the community for a long time, it sort of feels already like it's a ticket for them to continue violating any form of organizing by LGBTIQ organizations, individuals, and so on. So today with me, I have two amazing, gorgeous human beings who have joined me on Talking Spaces and will be helping me dive into dissecting what this ruling means. What does it mean to the community? What does it mean for democracy? What does it mean for the country? And what does it mean for any form of organizing in the country. On my right, I have Patience Muanguzi, but she will introduce herself and what she does in the best way that she wants to you know, be known on, on, on these talking spaces today. And then on my left, I have also a gorgeous man, uh, Richard Lusimbo. He will also introduce himself and we will then dive in into the questions that I'll be asking them. So first, I'll ask um, Patience to introduce herself and then Richard will introduce himself and then we will dive into it. Hello everyone, good evening. My name is Patience Mwanguzi, I am an advocate and human rights act activist working currently with Chapter 4 Uganda as the staff attorney, Rapid Response. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Richard Lusimbo, the Director General of Uganda Key Population Consortium, UKPC. I'm really delighted uh, to be part of this conversation this evening, and I really look forward to engaging, but also really listening to all of you who have... Uh, come to this safe space for the community to really have this conversation. Thank you. I know you've been waiting for a while, uh, our audience and our community. So the ruling yesterday. Patience, I'll start with you to give us the legal um, meaning, perspective of, of, of this law. Sexual Minorities Uganda, SMAG, was formed in 2004 as a pressure group, as a, not even a pressure group, it was just a space for queer people to express their queerness, but also hold the government accountable on any form of violation or any stigma or discrimination was, that, that was directed towards, um, towards uh, queer people. So um, at the time, there was an HIV AIDS meeting that was uh, coming up, and then uh, a, a group of 10 organizations met together and wrote a statement, and that's where the advocacy began. And along the way, there was backlash, 
or the, you know, the leaders, uh, for instance, um, the founding uh, director, uh, Victor Mukasa, uh, one of our founding members, Freedom and Rome Uganda, Farouk, uh, uh, Kasha Jacqueline Nabagesera, who were forced into exile because of the work that we were doing at the time. Uh, the organizing went underground for a bit, but it picked up late 2006 and then 2007, and there was a need for us to register as we needed to identify ourselves as um, you know, NGO or company limited by guarantee, we thought that it was, it was, it was important for us you know, to follow uh, the legal procedures for us to exist. Fast forward, uh, there was an attempt in 2012, then there was an attempt in 2016, and on 26, in 2016, then SMAG decided that, you know what, enough is enough, but also we are not doing enough if we do not hold the entities that are stopping us from existing legally to account. So we, we, we decided to file a case against URSB, which by that time, they refused to reserve our name. Reservation, by the way, just the name Sexual Minorities Uganda was, was rejected for reservation. This is not even the substantive uh, yes. registration. It was just reserving the name. And they said it's undesirable. So we moved on to, we, we got a ruling in 2018. And then that ruling, of course, was not in our favor. It was just a blink and bleak day for organizing in the country. And we thought it wise to go the, to the Court of Appeal. And it, it, it would maybe be a disservice if I do not mention that we took this case um, to the Court of Appeal with one of our partners then, uh, Human Rights Awareness and Promotion Forum. Um, so the, 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 the Court of Appeal ruling came out yesterday on 12th um, March 2024. With that background, patience, advocate of the High Court, what does this ruling actually say? Because what we've been seeing in the news, they said we can, no, no, that was not the headline. It read that LGBT organizations can't be registered, be registered mm -hmm. in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Is that what the ruling really said? Over to you. Thank you so much. Um, I think it's very important to have these kind of spaces to elaborate or to clear the air because the media is saying something else. The judgment is saying something else. The public is hearing something else. So it's very, very important to have these kind of conversations to clear this. Um, I'll give a brief background of the judgment that was delivered yesterday. The judgment that was delivered yesterday by the appellant court was arising from the decision of the High Court Civil Division that was the decision that was given in 2018 by, uh, uh, I think, is it Patricia was her, yeah, her Lordship Patricia was Wabasaza. So the, the background is when the matter failed or when the case was lost in trial, the High Court, Smug appealed because you have a right to appeal a judgment that you feel you're not satisfied with. So when they appealed, there's, there's something, I want to use a language that is very simple for all of us to understand. We break down the appeal into grounds of appeal. So we had six grounds of appeal, and among the six grounds of appeal, we are appealing against what we were not satisfied with in the previous judgment. Like uh, uh, my colleague has just talked about, uh, the denial of registration, not even registration, the denial to reserve 
the name SMAG is what we were dissatisfied with and had to appeal that. So in the grounds, we are talking about what we want court to see that the lower court erred in. So among the six grounds in this judgment, we lost four and one only two. But then the winning, I'm going to elaborate more and we understand what we lost and what we won. To begin with, the appellant court, as stated in the judgment, is upholding the decision of the lower court, saying that the registrar of Uganda Registration Services Bureau, URSB, the registrar was within her mandate to deny or to refuse the, the reservation of the name SMAG based on Section 32 of the Companies Act, that she has the powers to refuse the registration of the name. Registration of a name that, that, that the Bureau deems, that the Registration Bureau deems undesirable, or the registrar deems undesirable. Undesirable, attributing it to it is against policy and public interest. So the judge in the appellate court or the appellate court generally is upholding the decision that was made by the lower court saying that they were within their mandate to refuse the registration, sorry, to refuse the reservation of the name SMAG because it is undesirable. So the question remains, what does undesirable mean? What does the court really mean when it says the name is undesirable? Mind you, we need to take this into consideration. This is just one organization, and the judgment is not in relation to all other organizations. And it is not in, we call it in REM, it's not a public, uh, I don't know, it's not. Uh, yes, it's <laughs> not saying that all organizations, we are now talking about SMAG in particular. They are saying sexual minorities, Uganda is undesirable. The reason they are giving for it to be undesirable, it is based back on the objectives. On the objectives of. What are those objectives? And the objectives, if we are to state them, I'm going to, 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 to give you the detail. The objectives, according to the appellate court, the appellate court is saying that among the objectives that SMAG is going to do, it includes promotion of LGBTI rights, stroke homosexuality, which is an offense in Uganda. And, and it's saying that it is against national policies and directives in the Constitution of Uganda, 1995 Constitution of Uganda. So th this <coughs> leaves a little bit of confusion, both to the public and what the, the decision actually was based on. It feels like it's not only the name being undesirable, but what actually the organization is going to do is now the problem. So the, 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 the court is recognizing that there's a right to register an organization. There's a freedom of association that we all know. But when you read the judgment, it is saying if it is, if among the objectives the organization is going to do, it includes anything that is a crime, which is, homosexuality, according to section 145. So let me go briefly to section 145 of the penal code, not to read it, but to, to let you know it is talking about unnatural offense. It's, it's saying that if, uh, if someone is found having carnal knowledge with a person against the order of nature. So the question remains, how is having carnal knowledge related to the objectives that SMAG was going to do? If you look at the objectives in the articles and memorandum, uh, of articles for SMAG that court relied on, there is nothing to do with canon knowledge. So the, 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 the appellate court relying on canon knowledge under section 145 to refuse the registration of SMAG and saying it is, it is undesirable based on that is quite, uh, it, it, it takes us back to the roots that we started with, which is discrimination in our country. You cannot give a right and then take it away at the same time. Because if you see, if you, when you say that the name is undesirable, based on what you're going to do, which what you're going to do is section 145, but when you read the objectives, it's talking about defending and promoting rights of these people. They have not said rights to do canon knowledge. It's not anywhere in the 
articles and objectives. It is actually talking about, like I've been discussing with a friend and I say that LGBTI persons have, be, they should be seen as individuals before you look at them in terms of canon knowledge. Let's look at people as people first. They have other rights. They have a right to life. They have a right to health. They have a right to privacy. They have a right to food. They have a right to education. So when SMAG comes out and among its objectives, there is promoting and protecting the rights of LGBTI persons. How is that related to Section 145? So let me take you back to breaking it down. Um, I hope that is a bit clear, that the, 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 the judgment best was mainly based on the name being undesirable but what makes the name undesirable are the objectives of the organization mm -hmm. so the court in the appellate the appellate court upholds the judgment of the trial court saying that they cannot be registered because the name is undesirable what makes it undesirable is the objectives i think i've tried to break it down a bit um if if if, if you could let us know yeah. what those objectives really are so that the, 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 the community can know. Because okay. they might be thinking that hey, maybe there's something there that actually the court saw that the community did not see. So, because okay. I know there are three. Yeah. So among the objectives, one, there is defending and promoting fundamental human rights for all, irrespective of their status. This is basically what all human rights organizations do. There is nothing really that is talking about homosexuality anywhere. Part B, that is the second one, is research and documentation of violations of fundamental human rights of LGBTI people in Uganda. We cannot deny, this is plain black and white statement that I'm going to make. There are several violations that are being, several, yeah, several violations that are being uh, done against LGBTI persons. They're being beaten, they're being denied jobs, they're being, there's so many violations. So the other is research and documentation. We cannot say when you research and document, you're falling under section 145 of the penal code. It is not related at all. Part C is promote protection, well-being and dignity of LGBTI persons and combat discrimination in policy, law and practice. So when you're promoting the well-being and, 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 and pass, wait a minute, it's well-being and, uh, dignity. Dignity. and dignity. Mm -hmm. So these are persons, like I started saying, these are individuals. Let us look at them as individuals before we go to the bit of canon knowledge. Yeah, mm -hmm. These are people who have a right to dignity, a right to privacy, a right to generally be well. So if an organization is coming up to protect the rights of these people, how is it falling under Section 145? That's the question to be asked. So among the objectives, I'm, I'm trying to show you that there is really nothing that uh, should be relied on to fall in Section 145, promoting canon knowledge. It's not related at all, in my view. Providing security response and safe space to the members in case of a crisis, honestly. Looking at these objectives, they're very plain. As any human rights organization, this is the mandate. This is the work that you're supposed to do. The other is providing healthcare services. Unless if you're saying that LGBTI persons are not, uh, do not have a right to health services, unless if that is what the court wants to say. The other is to provide support and promote development initiatives for LGBTI persons. These are economic rights. Mm. So looking at all that, if you have been listening, there is really nothing related to Promoting. So we have a heart or we have a mind that is assuming, talking about the narratives that are around LGBTI rights in the judgment. Yes, they are, there's a mind that has all the other narratives, promotion, children, rape, all those things. That is the mind that, that people have the moment they see protecting LGBTI rights. Yeah? yeah. I hope I have answered the issue of... Uh, the objectives and then to break it down more uh, you see you see if you get a chance to see the judgment you will notice that the appellate court outrightly says it that it is not in doubt that smug is associated with the promotion and protection of rights of LGBTI which according to the laws cited in Uganda uh, it is against the national objectives and directive principles of state policy, which are part of the constitution. So the question still remains. Because uh, the funny bit is, if you have read the judgment, the judge says that 
I'm not, the appeal is not about, it is not about any behavior in society. The appeal, the appeal is about mm -hmm. the name, the reservation of the name. But then when you read page 14, the same court is saying that it is not in doubt that SMAG is associated with the promotion and protection of the rights. <laughs> so it is actually confusing. Are you talking, why are you in the first place denying the name? You're denying the name because you say it is undesirable and that is what the appeal is about. So why then are you bringing in what SMAG is going to do? What about the objectives? So in actual sense, the decision is based on discrimination. It is based on homosexuality narratives. It's not really based on the name being undesirable because what is making the name undesirable are the objectives. Mm -hmm. So to break it down more, um, uh, there was a ground, when I started I say that the appeal was broken into six grounds. The other ground we were talking about, uh, the, the appellants were challenging the delay in delivering the in, re, in, in communicating back to the refusal of reserving the name and, and they were saying that the inordinate delay was unfair and it constituted a unfair treatment of an administrative body towards the person, towards the organization. And this, the judge agrees with us that there was an inordinate delay and that was unfair. And then the other part was uh, for damages and costs because in the first court, they awarded costs. Mm. That the party who loses is supposed to pay costs. Mm. But here, the judge disagrees and says that if, uh, if someone comes for a remedy, again, we cannot impute like costs on them. So that was, uh, that was a success for us. There were no costs that were awarded. So we cannot say that, uh, this was a win or a lose or a lose or a win. In fact, it leaves us in a state of, if I'm to sum it up, there is a, a freedom of association in the law and a freedom of association that we all know. But then if it is termed as the objectives, if at all the objectives have a bit of LGBTI rights, then you do not have the right. It's what I say that you're giving the right and then take it in, taking it away at the same time. But also we need to remember that this is not a judgment that has been given to stop the registration of NGOs in Uganda. No, and that is wrong. And, what, and whoever is doing it in the media houses, it is not right. That is misinformation. The actual thing mm. is this was a judgment only for smug. It is not a judgment for the gen general public that no human rights organization doing LGBTI work should be registered. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, Patience, and I hope that um, the community has listened to that and it's calming some fears down, but also imparting knowledge and uh, information um, to the community.